What's up guys, Shambles11, and welcome to Eventide 2 on the good old Xbox One. And before we begin, a huge thank you to my old buddy, Lucas Slipko from Artifacts Mundi for allowing me to share this game with you. Okay, so, as we all know by now, Artifacts Mundi are the number one makers of puzzle hidden object games. I can't even remember now how many there's been. I think this may be the ninth release on Xbox One. And quite simply put, no one else really does this and certainly no one can beat them. Um, these games are absolutely now nailed. The formula is, is down to perfection. We essentially have to move from screen to screen, section to section, by solving a variety of puzzles, we will require a certain object. And to get that object, we have to either hunt around the screen or solve different various things to do. Now, this one does have a few little things that are different. As you may have seen at the very beginning, Jenny, help me. it says that your actions you change the story. The now, there are five areas where you can basically choose to do the nice thing or the bad thing. And because I've played this game through twice and I have done both sets of options, I can confirm that it doesn't greatly change what happens. In fact, it's exactly the same. But kind of the little bit of dialogue that you have with the character will be ever so slightly different. Now, while that's not a massive thing, uh, it is nice to have a little bit of variety and a little bit of change. Speaking of which, the game has... you can tell it's a, a, a later product. In comparison to the earlier ones that were released, this has got a much higher um, production value to it. The cutscenes are, are getting better and better, the voice acting is getting better and better as they all go on. Um, they are more animated, the characters now move their lips properly in time, everything's you know, nice and, and really where it should be. Um, there are a wide variety of characters. There are various good guys and bad guys that we can uh, defeat and, and beat. Uh, the other thing that has changed in comparison to others is there is this sort of crafting system where now if we have an object that requires multiple parts um, we actually have to put them together. Pretty simply done but it can be just a little bit awkward and a little bit fiddly having to hold down the trigger button whilst we scroll across to find what we're looking for. There are collectibles. Now I'll be honest with you I'm not entirely sure why. There are two types of collectibles. There are hidden mirrors and there are hidden postcards. When... Here you go, here's one of the options I was talking about. Um, when we collect all the postcards we scroll over them and it says you have collected all the postcards. When we collect all the mirrors, it says you have collected all the mirrors. It does not change anything or give you anything. So it feels like it's just tagged in for the sake of it. But again, both are linked to an achievement. Now, speaking of which, there's no DLC with this one. It is just the game. So we can get the vast majority of the achievements fairly quickly just through one playthrough. I didn't need a guide, there are guides online, but I didn't need a guide to find all the collectibles. I found them myself, um, mostly just by clicking all over the screen, but you can see them and you can hunt for them. It is fairly straightforward. Um, there's only one other achievement that I nearly missed, which was to talk to every set of goblins, uh, but on my second playthrough when I did the uh, expert setting, I talked to the first goblin and that was the one I missed and it unlocked, so it does carry over onto your next playthrough, which is good. Now there are a couple of scenes towards the end and I have been there before. I don't know if that's a little link or an homage to the earlier games, um, a way of linking them all together, or is it just laziness? I'm not sure. Um, obviously this is a sequel, but there is a corridor and a stairway right at the very end and I absolutely recognise it, it's just been decorated differently. Now looking at the facts that this is Eventide 2, I'm hoping it's just a link and not laziness. The puzzles thankfully are different to do. Uh, and there is, I mean I know I'm showing you mostly one kind of puzzle, I'm just trying to keep it relatively spoiler free. There is a nice variety of puzzles. I have to say I found the game pretty easy. Uh, there's only one puzzle which is tricky but I managed to get my head round because it was in the last game um, and it absolutely drove me insane. Other than that 
I found them not too bad at all. Uh, I did this in two playthroughs on the easy setting and then on the expert setting in two evenings. This being the puzzle that can drive you insane if you're not sure what's going on. Uh, but if you do get truly stuck on a puzzle, you can always skip them, which is very, very welcome. Again, there's an achievement for not skipping any puzzles, so you might not want to. Overall, guys, a thoroughly enjoyable game. Uh, rather short, rather brief, but if you've played one of these before, you know exactly what you're going to get, and so there shouldn't be any surprises that are too shocking. Um, like I say, Artifacts Mundi absolutely specialise in this kind of game, and yet again, they have nailed it. So... I can't help but recommend this game. Uh, I've enjoyed it from start to finish. Hope this review's helped. If it has, please give me a little thumbs up and a comment. Thanks for watching. Till next time.